downtown historic tourist area of town and you may automatically notice the difference in decor the complete modernization um, beautiful sidewalks elegant palm trees everywhere man what a difference huh craft style stores it's uh it seems to be quite a whole nother world compared to uh where we were a few minutes ago huh this is i kid you not literally up the road less than uh half a mile from that wonderful uh beautiful old-timey neighborhood that you saw with the vintage houses and oh man valhalla bakery if you're ever in st petersburg and you have a hankering for the most delicious baked goods i can see why they open at 10 o'clock they ain't gotta open early no way you wait for them they don't wait for you there were actually people in there you know i don't like to invade other people's privacies but there were actually women in there from offices fighting over the cakes because like i said they only make a certain amount of um, delicious treats every day and then that is absolutely it so when the cakes are gone the cakes are gone and the one girl i felt so bad for her she was like oh i left my wallet at the office i gotta go back and get it sorry to say before i even left the place somebody came in and snatched up her cake well i guess not so much her cake right she's got her wallet i mean I've, it's happened to me but there's no way i believe that that item's gonna be waiting for me when i come back i mean first come first serve society today sadly enough no one even uh, well not here in the u.s not many places in many big tourist areas will hold I think the cake was $39.50. was a 12-inch cake. A bit pricey, but absolutely delicious. No doubt about it. Could tell just from the cupcake. The cupcake was actually what it said. Cup cake. It was dense, but not overly dense. Like you would be like, oh, it's a muffin. It's way too dense. It was like a delicious, perfect piece of cake. And then the buttercream was light but yet sweet enough and satisfying. Oh, I can't say enough about it. We'll get Rini's take and I'll let you guys know in a future video, but I can't see that raspberry lemon bar, which looks absolutely delicious. And to be quite honest with you, may not make it home. Well, it may because I'm a lemon fan, but I also like raspberry, but, 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 but raspberries give me a rash and they kind of make my throat itch and you know, we gotta protect the golden uh, the golden throat so anyway let's take a walk around little fifth avenue park avenue little versace town i don't know what you would call it but man it is quite different and it is quite high end my friends let's see what they got to offer. on YouTube you know it awesome. take a look next week you'll see it up there set, yeah. all right everything. oh that's why I'm on everybody to know come to st. Petersburg we're wide open and looking for your business Absolutely. have a great day see that everybody here wants to work I don't know about other parts of the country but I can tell you right now here in my part of the country everyone wants to work everything is open they want you to come visit classic tattoos oh this place must be jamming at night or it should be. It may not be currently, but it should be. But they want you to know it's time to come back out, like I've said many times. Here in St. Petersburg, as you can tell, in both the old and the new section, they are just chomping at the bit for business. See, we are open in St. Pete. They want everybody to know it's time to come back. It's time to get together, forget about Coronas, and come have some fun. 
What an amazing art gallery, huh? Not surprising with all the street art we saw. Now, you know, the upper class wants to take their turn at art as well. I don't blame them. So from this end down, amazing galleries and um, boutique shops and boutiques in the, just in general. I think it is really, the mix is blends well. It goes from the old school art deco to this new modern millennial steel and glass, uh, also kind of new age art deco. And I think it's just an excellent, excellent vibe for the city. I told you, man, I am seriously loving this city. The, the fusion, that's probably the best word. The fusion between old yuppie and new millennial, between vintage 1980s and current 2020 is just seamless. It runs together here perfectly. They, they've embraced the old school and put it together with the new style. Uh, very zen, like uh, I knew it. This morning's start was a perfect start to our day, right? All these kind of art installations are throughout town everywhere because I'm telling you, the city has a zen vibe. I mean, it is a tourist town. And definitely, if you come to St. Petersburg, don't waste all your time at the museums and the harbor. We're going down there now because it is absolutely stunning. But work your way up into the neighborhoods. Head up Central Avenue, head up First Avenue, all the way from, it starts on zero down there, but all the way up into 25, 30th Street. It is nothing but endless art and endless boutique shops and galleries and friendly people and businesses looking to get back into business. This, this, is, uh, this is what it's all about, man. This is, this is. What a difference in real estate, huh? Just a mere one and a half miles away from that wonderful 1960s restored historic district is this amazing new high skyscrapers glass and steel and concrete wow man what a difference huh didn't take but yet a mile to go from where everyone works and pays for this to this amazing incredible tourist town that you see everybody enjoying themselves I just thought we'd start today where we did so we could really understand what goes into making such a great tourist destination. See, when you come visit a city like St. Petersburg and you enjoy lunch under one of these wonderful umbrellas on this row of palm tree lined streets, the only reason you are able to do that is because of places like the faux fat uh, Buddhist temple and the uh, Kemwood area of residents who pay super high property taxes and like the Valhalla Bakery that supports the neighborhood all year round when there are no snowbirds and there are no tourists. There is so much that goes into the infrastructure of making a really five-star uh, resort destination that a lot of people don't know. That's why I thought it would be really interesting for all of us to see exactly how all this comes together. I mean, I showed you where we started from. Those are the people that work Monday through Friday, seven days a week to support all of this, all the beauty. Behind me, the Bayfront. Huh? Incredible. St. Pete Yacht Club, Private Slips, Tiny Private Islands. All the super and entitled and rich live here in this part of town. I just thought we'd start the day by seeing the neighborhood that paid for it all. But now, since we've done that, uh, without further ado, let me show you around beautiful tourist St. Petersburg, where if you come on vacation, man, you can really relax, have a good time, and absolutely enjoy yourself. Uh, beautiful palm trees. We got Sun 365. It's always warm here. You saw earlier how friendly people are in this neighborhood. And pretty much that goes for everywhere in Florida. I mean, once you're in Florida, you're just so happy to be here, right? Uh, I would think so. Anyway, you gotta check this out. These are some serious 
uh, 500-year-old Spanish moss trees. Just check out how beautiful they are. St. Petersburg got lots and lots and lots of museums. Welcome to the St. Petersburg Museum of Fine Arts. This is one of the nice ones. I've been in here. Me and my daughter visited probably every single museum in the state of Florida. Well, at least in the Tampa Bay area. Let me retract that. State of Florida is a big, big place and there must be millions of museums. But uh, we've been to most of them here on the West Coast. This particular one, wonderful current fine artwork uh, from all around the world, different displays, different artists. Uh, up the road that way further south is the Salvador Dali Museum, absolutely one of our favorites. Probably my favorite museum in the whole world, uh, and that says a lot. I mean, I've been to the Netherlands, and the Netherlands is nothing but one giant uh, never-ending museum, right? Uh, Salvador Dali Museum, unbelievable. The uh, artworks they bring in besides his own work. Uh, we saw a, a Disney and Dolly show there. Spectacular! And you know I don't just give those away. But yeah, St. Petersburg up the road that way. If you go further north, they have a Museum of Modern Art. So yeah, I would say as far as a cultural destination, if you really dig museums, then you're going to be happy coming to this town. In this, I'd say maybe two mile stretch of road, you have three serious museums that all year round have, uh, like this, Derek Adams, buoyant, September 12th to the 29th. So that means, you know, starting in the next couple of days, actually, that would be tomorrow, which, happy birthday, my son. My son's birthday is 9-12, and uh, man, if he was an art lover, I'd take him, but him and his mom, Rini, they're not museum people. They like museums, you know what I mean? But they wouldn't have a birthday destination at a museum anytime. So yeah, I think if you really want to enjoy the cultural scene on the West Coast, city of St. Petersburg is definitely the overall best choice. I, I, even Tallahassee, which is not the West Coast, but kind of, you know, we call it the panhandle. I don't think there's anywhere, even in Miami, they have really nice museums. I don't think they have quite the selection in such a small area like we do here in Tampa. And we are really, like I said, St. Petersburg was actually a artist colony at one time. So they are super duper into their, you know, installations around the city, performance arts in their local theaters, massively funding all these giant uh, marble, column, stone, and uh, wrought iron, old school museums that you really don't see them build anymore. I mean, just look at the entry. It's closed because of, you know, the unknown enemy. But I mean, my goodness, when it's open, it's really just a spectacular looking place. They put a lot of money into not only the artwork inside, but the, uh, the exterior and the walk and just everything about the building is quite amazing. So let's take a stroll down the avenue. Uh, I think it's a good time to head over to the pier. I'm getting mighty overheated and uh, it's always a nice cool breeze at the bayfront. But you know, one other thing before we get over there, just wanted to show you across the street, the power of infrastructure. They have the most beautiful open air mall that I've seen in a long time. So 
We'll take a quick walk through there and check it out just to show you what that's like. But told you, Saks Fifth Avenue, Stillwater Tavern, a lot of expensive stores that really not on my everyday list, if you know what I mean. But you gotta check it out. It's quite an incredible little plaza.